Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to season three and episode number 306 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Tuesday, January 30th. 2024, and hopefully it will be a nice day here at the Beaver Lodge. I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. We have a nibble for you today. I am so sorry for being late. I literally have no excuse. I just slept right through the alarm. It happens. I I have earplugs on when I sleep because, uh, yeah, I did not hear a thing. So um, I, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> and I thank you so much for your um, patience <laughs> and your indulgence. Um, a big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. But before we do anything else, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today? Well, sir, I, uh, I fell asleep last night at 8 o'clock. Woke up at 20 after 9, crawled into bed, went right back to, like I fell asleep on the couch, uh, went right back to bed and slept right through until 4, got up, went to toilet, and then went back to sleep until 5, and then fell back to sleep again until 6 when the second alarm went off. So yeah, I'm uh, well rested, feeling good, Um, feeling fresh, uh, vim full of vim and vigor, and I'm hopeful, hopeful, hopefully, I'm hoping we'll see some shunt. Sunshine today. I would like to see some sunshine today. I can't speak. I'm only on my first cup of coffee, so that might have something to do with it. <laughs> but you do have coffee. I did. Well, I have what's left over. Uh, Bridget oh. found some, made a pot yesterday. Not a full pot because I didn't have enough for that. And yesterday I went out and picked up groceries and I forgot to buy coffee. So I'm an idiot. <laughs> like we talked about this on the show. I, I'm slow. <laughs> I actually went to the I went to the store last night specifically to pick up garbage bags, kitchen catchers, because I have no kitchen catchers. I have nothing. Okay. So I go to the store and I get in there and I'm like, well, I'll pick up this and this and this and this and get up to the front with the basket. And I like, I think that's everything. I get home. Shit. No garbage bags, no coffee. I've been like that this week. I have a prescription waiting at the pharmacy that I've passed by like two or three times over the past two or three days. I just have not got in. Then I got home. It's like, oh, crap. Yeah. It's, it's waiting for me. That's, <laughs> sometimes that's just how things go. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, it's one of those things where the, the brain just goes into auto mode. And I think last night, I, I did not have a lot of last night. I was tired yesterday, as you saw on the show. I was mm, very yeah. logy. I didn't get enough sleep the night before. I was dehydrated when I woke up because I sweat like a demon some nights. Last night was one of those nights. So I've already had three glasses of water and this coffee. So hopefully I'll be rehydrated soon. But yeah, uh, 
that may have added to my Logie attitude yesterday. So I'm uh, feeling much better today. So hopefully, uh, hopefully today will go smoothly. When we'll, when we'll find out soon enough. All right. Um, well, let's get right in it, uh, right to it, kids. Um, there were some really interesting um, comments in a scrum mm -hmm. by the leader of the Bloc Québécois. Um, um, I, I watched that and I went, well, that, we'll have to bring that up on the show because... Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it on the show. I think I did mention it on the show when I talked about the leader of the Bloc a while ago. Uh, I think just last week when I was talking about uh, his comments about Pierre Poliev when he made uh, went to that radio station mm -hmm. and started accusing the, the Bloc of having abandoned Quebec and basically said, you know, he says th those lies are going to catch up with him. And I said, you know, that the Bloc Québécois leader, you know, when it comes to Pierre Poliev, basically has, and pardon my language for dropping enough bombs so early in the show, but really, really has no fucks to give. Mm -hmm. because he does not like Pierre. No, it's... Like, it's a At personal all. thing with him. Like, it's At not all. just he doesn't like his politics. He doesn't like him as a human. Yes. It's obvious. It's obvious. And I said that if the press was going to give him opportunities to speak in English and cover him, that until election day, he was basically going to be, you know, if you think of it as a boxing match, doing all the body blows, boom, 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 like working the body and tenderizing him for the final that uh, prime minister could come up and give him the final roundhouse or haymaker. It's yeah, uh, it's right there. If there's a lot of this going on uh, until election day, um, as they say in French, il va passer un très mauvais quart d'heure. He's going to have a very very rough time. Mr. Grizzly, let's play it because this is a thing of beauty. Um, and Cassie's asking a question that I also have. Uh, oh, what do the green yes. squares represent on the... Uh, is it? Does it have to do with the mosque shooting? Yes, or? it does. Okay. It that's does. What I it, it was... Um, yeah. See the green squares that they're all wearing? I, I figured that's what it was, but I wasn't sure. Okay, let's have a look at this. Is there no sound? Oh, I muted it. My bad. I'll start it over. My apologies. More volume, please. I, there's nothing I can do about this. Okay. Do you mind if I believe that question would have been more relevant than that one? I don't have much to say about that. I said yesterday on, on X because I'm sure. Let's start that again. Wow. All kinds of technical issues this morning. I apologize. There's uh, some, some problems here. It was not showing up. And now it is. So here we go. Let's try okay. it. You saying that you are propping up the Liberal government. Can you clarify how you view your party support of government measures and confidence motions? Do, Do you, you mind if I believe that question would have been more relevant than that one? I don't have much to say about that. I said yesterday on, on X, because I'm sure to find some other libertarians over there, there are, there's Poiliev and there are others, that he says anything. Anything is good in order to have you ask me a question about the slogans is going to repeat over and again. He says, I support the liberal economic policies. Poiliev has not presented one damn economic policy since he's been there. <laughs> his, 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 his approach about economic policies is like trying to remove fightings in hockey in removing the referee. Yeah. They have no economic policy at all, so I cannot be for or against. There's none. But you could clarify your position on the government's policies. I voted against all the last budgets of this government and uh, mise à jour économique. I do not know how to translate that. Hmm? So why do you think the conservatives are tying you to them? There's no limit about the level of lights he wants on himself. I hope Stornoway has a lot of mirrors in the in the rooms because he really does like himself. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. He, there you go. He doesn't present a damn policy. There's nothing that he does but lie. He will say anything to get you to ask me a question about his slogans, 
I mm-hmm. hope that there are a lot of lights that stored away. Uh, sorry, there's no limit to the amount of light he wants upon himself, and I hope mm-hmm. there are a lot of mirrors that thrown away because this guy really doesn't like himself. No, he does like himself. Sorry. Okay, I heard doesn't there. But he really does like himself. That's why he wants. Hope there's a lot of mirrors so he can look at himself all day long. So, um, yeah, he pretty much nailed it. Yeah, yeah. He he's not. He doesn't. Well, he doesn't give a damn, and he doesn't need to. He doesn't give a shit. He knows he'll never be prime minister. And he's not looking for votes in Alberta or on Ontario. No, he doesn't care. So he's just going to call it as he sees it. And, and you know, politics is dirty pool. It's a dirty game. It always has been. But he, he's ramped it up to a whole, and not, not, not Bouchard, uh, not uh, Blanchet. Poliev has ramped mm-hmm. it up to a whole new level that we've never seen in this country before. Yep. I mean, having the audacity to call the prime minister a Marxist and then never have to answer for it. What the hell is going on? Yep. And right there is where you see the value of the block. Mm-hmm. You may not like the block. You may not think it has to be a federal party. You may hate its politics in terms of separatism or whatnot. Mm-hmm. But the block's philosophy is if it's good for Quebec, they vote for it. Yes. If it's not good for Quebec, it doesn't. And they don't try to sabotage the rest of Canada. Well, and so if, it, if it's a policy that has nothing to do specifically with Quebec or Quebec identity, you're probably going to get the straight poop. Mm-hmm. Well, something that, that's always troubled me, and, and I, you may recall this a number of years ago when they were having a federal debate and they said Elizabeth May should not be a seat at the table because they have no seats. I'm like, then why is, why is the leader of the, the Parti Québécois there? He represents one province. They have writings in only one province. And although the Green Party had no seats across the country, they were running candidates in every riding. So which one is national and which one isn't? But nobody ever answered me as to why that was the case. While it's federal and it's this, I'm like, yeah, but that's still not a, a decent answer. One party has ridings and, and they're running people in ridings across the country. One party does not. Mm-hmm. The party that has candidates in every riding should have a seat at the debate table. If he's going to get one, why would you deny her one? And I have a reason to believe it was probably because she was smarter than everybody at that debate. Nobody wants to face her. I think that's largely what it was. Because she too has no fucks to give. (laughs) She'll rip you and you win. Yeah, she doesn't care. Yep. She knows she'll never form government. So, you know, why hold back? Plus she does her homework. Well, that too. You know, and look, she... Do I see eye to eye with her? If we, had, no. if we had to pay people on merit mm-hmm. based on the amount of work they do and the quality of the work, mm-hmm. she would be the highest paid person in parliament. Yes. Objectively. She's okay. even respected by her peers. Yes. On that level. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't win parliamentary, parliamentarian of the year, which she has, I think, twice. Mm-hmm. Voted on by your peers in parliament. If you haven't earned their respect, if you're not doing the work. It's like, it's like they do fear her. Oh, yes. yes. And they fear him. Because mm-hmm. they don't care. They're going yeah. to call it as they see it every they will slap single you. time. And I, I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. Yep. Because they need to be called out for their lies. Yep. Now... This is one thing I like about the block. The thing that I don't like what was going on here is when you're talking about the green square. Mm -hmm. The green square represents the green carpets in the Quebec City Mosque. Was that what it was for? Okay. Yeah. Because about seven years ago Mm -hmm. was the day that there was the big shooting at that at that mosque in Quebec City. And uh, I think that, yeah, it was, that was January 29th. So yesterday was the, the anniversary of uh, that day. And um, I can't remember, I'm um, just trying to remember how many people uh, 
what the damage was there off the top of my head, and I, and I don't. I thought it was seven. But people died. Mm -hmm. Right? And there was a moment of great solidarity where everybody showed up. Which was followed by stuff like Bill 21. Mm -hmm. And I do not know how you can be a person who supports Bill 21, which is the secularism bill, which though they did a all religions matter type thing to dilute it within it. They made it apply to all religions, but remember they didn't want to take down that crucifix from the Assembly Nacional at first. They eventually did, but they really fought that, which kind of betrayed the fact that it wasn't about all religions. Really, mm -hmm. not one. Yes. And then they threw in all the others to sort of like say, oh, no, 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 we're not bigoted. Mm -hmm. Just, I do not know how you could be a person who lives in a province and actually supports a bill, and I will say it again, that forces certain citizens to pay the same taxes as everybody else and yet not have access to the same jobs as everyone else. And when that bill was originally proposed, it's not only the same access to all their jobs, but even the same access as government to, to government services. Originally, when that bill was proposed, mm -hmm. you wouldn't have been able to go and get your driver's license or deal with the government or file something in provincial court. And they pulled that back. Yeah, well, you know, they could have had no choice on that, right? So they're doing it with language, though. At the moment, you got six months to learn French or else you can't get served anymore. Right? That's Bill 96. But Bill 21, I do not know how you stand there and wear that pin and say you stand in front of Islamophobia when you support mm -hmm. a policy that denies people to cer certain employment that was created because of Islamophobia. Number one. Just do not get it. And there's been a lot of that crap going on yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, there was someone that came onto our True North eager feed. And you may have seen I used a lot of F-bombs at some point. People watched the feed. Because I pointed out something about Pierre Poilievre. Because yesterday, this man put out a video because of the day, right? You know that Pierre Poliev likes to, what's the word? Yeah. Pose? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. One, one of the nicknames I have for him is Poser Pierre. Which is adequate and, and, and fits. I mean, it's accurate, adequate. It's, uh, yeah, I think it works well. Right. So we had him... Just like yesterday, I complained that on the day they were having those votes in Parliament, that 24-hour telethon, mm -hmm. where they voted down everything. Every single thing. On the day that he had a fundraiser going on in Point Claire. $1,700 a plate. But he also fit in a little time to go to a first day of Hanukkah lighting mm -hmm. ceremony yeah, so that he could provide cover for himself. Of course. While he denied the right of every MP in the House, but particularly Jewish MPs, mm -hmm. to spend time with for. community and family. Mm -hmm. While they were voting against funding for a Holocaust museum and a Jewish community center in Vancouver. And he was voting remotely. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if he took a moment to vote remotely while he was gone on those two issues himself. Uh, there was a shot of him with an iPad up, apparently voting. Yes, but did he vote on every single measure or was there a couple of votes while he was talking and all I that kind of stuff? But he might have specifically voted to deny funding, actually push that button mm -hmm. to a Holocaust museum. While he was at it while he was at or on his way to or on his way from and then he went to one thousand seven hundred dollar dinner mm -hmm. yes and then came back daddy came home 
at one or two in the morning, Bags some big clapping and whatnot, because with McDonald's for the kids, yeah, because he was too damn cheap to organize any type of catering or even just have pizza sent to them, mm-hmm. knowing that he was going to be there all night. That's how he takes care of his own party, and people yeah. expect him to take care of us. He brought him frickin' McDonald's, a la Trump. <laughs> Yesterday. He put out one of his little videos and he tweeted seven years ago, an unthinkable terrorist attack took place on the Muslim community in Quebec. As we remember the victims and stand with the survivors, we renew our commitment to ending Islamophobia and making sure Canada is always a country where everyone can worship in peace. Mr. Grizzly, I was wondering if you could uh, play it, if you would. Seven years ago today, the Muslim community in St. Foy gathered at the Islamic Cultural Center of Quebec for an evening of worship. As they stood on the mosque's green carpet and finished their prayers, a monstrous terrorist opened fire on worshippers, murdering six men in cold blood. These were husbands, fathers, sons, friends, and most of all, Canadians. It's unthinkable that they had their lives stolen and it must never happen again. Today, many of us are wearing green squares as a symbol of remembrance and commitment. On this somber anniversary, we remember the victims. We honor those who were injured and those who survived. We renew our commitment to defeat the evils of Islamophobia that led to this horror and outrage. And always keep Canada a country where our citizens are free to worship God in peace and safety. Okay. Number one, it would be Allah mm-hmm. in this case. Yes. This one made my blood boil. Now, you saw him. He had that, those eyes that he does when he wants to try and pretend he's sincere and he brought out his soft voice. Mm-hmm. Mr. Grizzly, will you please put this up? Because this motherfucker, pardon my language, seven years ago, after this attack, this liberal MP, Ikra Khalid, Mm -hmm. sponsored motion number 103. This was on March 23rd, 2017. Private members business M13 systemic racism and religious discrimination motion text that in the opinion of the house the government should a recognize the need to quell the increasing public climate of hate and fear b condemn islamophobia and all forms of systemic racism and religious discrimination and take note of house of commons petition e411 and the issue raised by it and c request that the standing committee on the canadian heritage undertake a study on how the government could one develop a whole of government approach to reducing or eliminating systemic racism and religious discrimination, including Islamophobia in Canada, while ensuring a community centered focus with a holistic response through evidence based policy making Two, collect data to contextualize hate crimes reports and to conduct needs assessments for impacted communities, and that the committee should present its findings and recommendation to the House no later than 240 calendar days from the adoption of this motion provided that in its report, the committee should make recommendations that the government may use to better reflect the enshrined rights and freedoms in the Constitution Acts, including the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. That was the text of the motion. Conservatives opposed this motion Mm -hmm. because it contained the word Islamophobia in it, and they wanted to do an all religions matter thing to it by listing all the others, even though it says Islamophobia and all forms of systemic racism and religious discrimination. They wanted them specifically listed or the word Islamophobia removed from it. So it just said all forms of religious discrimination. That that did not pass, that portion of it. The vote on that motion was yes, 201, nay, 
91. The nays came primarily, if not solely, from the Conservative Party of Canada. And Mr. Grizzly, if you would, please. That's really blurry. Not sure. Mr. Pierre Polyev, conservative, nay. Mm -hmm. Shortly after the attack, mm -hmm. he Just could not out. even bring himself to support a motion which has no teeth, has no force of law. None. Zero. To condemn Islamophobia, and actually have a House committee look at, study the issue to find things that the government can do to help fight them. Things that would not cost money because motions cannot have money. Private members' bills cannot have money. Mm -hmm. It's one of the rules in civics. That's why when we talked to the other day about Leah Gazan's private members' bill mm -hmm. for red dress alerts. You, you expect them to understand the civics. <laughs> Come on. Okay. You, you've, got a, you've got a, a leader of the opposition who is uh, obfuscating between provincial and federal jurisdictions intentionally to drive hatred towards the PM because he wants to blame the prime minister for everything, most of which are provincial matters. I mean, yeah. civics? He doesn't give a shit about civics. Yeah. Now, it was David A. Anderson former member of the House of Commons, who's not there anymore, from Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. who had proposed the amendment to remove Islamophobia from the motion and change the wording to, quote, condemn all forms of systemic racism, religious intolerance, and discrimination of Muslims, Jews, Christians, Sikhs, Hindus, and other religious communities. So completely not talking about Islamophobia in a motion about Islamophobia. And this guy is now sitting in front of a camera with a green pin on him, stating in a tweet that as we remember the victims and stand with the survivors, we renew our commitment to extending Islamophobia, which begs the question, how the, and excuse my language again, but how the fuck do you renew a commitment you never fucking made in the first place? This is who he is. Oh, yeah. It's always been who he is. Lasha says there's no limits to the amount of lights he wants on him. Mm. And he loves mirrors. This is what I mean. He put on his I care eyes. And, and he does not give two fucks. No, he doesn't care at all. He and you can will. tell how that, because you can tell about that how by how he's been dealing with the Israel and Gaza issue. Mm -hmm. There has not been one moment he has not been fully 100% in the bag without any reservations or conditions for what the government of Netanyahu is doing. I'm not talking about Jewish people. The Jewish people deserve our support. October 7th was an incredible bloody massacre. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest annihilation and extermination of Jewish people in one day since the Holocaust. Yes. And we just had International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Mm -hmm. Because back then we said never again, and it seems some people fucking forgot that. Well, they... We said never again for a damn reason. They don't care. But we live in a pluralistic society. And we have close to 400,000 Canadians who identify as members of the Jewish faith, and we have about one and a half million members who identify as Muslim. Mm -hmm. And we need to take care of all of them. Period. 
all of them. A Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. Yeah. They are all our brothers. They are all our sisters. Well, and we are not our brother's keeper. We are our brother. We are not our sister's keepers. We are our sister. What we do to them, what we allow to be done to them, Jewish and Muslim, we allow to be done to us. It's true. We are all equal. None of us has more or less worth than anyone else in this country. And this asshole who could not bring himself to even support a damn motion condemning Islamophobia is sitting there wearing a green fucking... I am so sorry. I'll let it go. Don't hold back, man. Just pandering for freaking votes. Mm -hmm. At the same time that he has all his minions going all around the country every damn day of Franco Terrazano's and the Lori Goldsteins. Well, I have a finding a freaking anti Semite under every damn rock. Of course. Painting people who are protesting, who are upset that tens of thousands of Palestinians have been exterminated. And calling those of us who have a problem with that too, supporters of genocide. And that's why I got into it with someone because I pointed out, and remember this guy also, remember when they had that barbaric practices snitch line? Mm -hmm. That guy was a member of that party. Oh, yeah. He said nothing when that happened. Of course he wouldn't. During the 10 or 11 years where absolutely everything mm -hmm. was happening post September 11th and the whole conservative party of Canada's motto was all Muslims are potential terrorists that you must fear. Fueling daily fear of our Muslim brothers and sisters by pushing the violent Muslim trope, which they've spent all summer doing again on the anti-trans stuff, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. trying to get the Muslim people, trying to dupe them into thinking that there was a problem with gay people and there was a problem with trans people, depending on the trope of the violent Muslim, the bigoted Muslim, trying to exploit that for their own benefit. This is a party that's tried to get us to fear our brothers and sisters for the better part of the last two decades. Mm -hmm. And he's wearing a damn green pin. And yesterday somebody got in it with me because I pointed out the fact that he said nothing during the stitch line thing and he also came out and spoke out about the kneecap thing that citizenship swearing in ceremonies mm -hmm. I don't understand I will admit I do not understand the whole kneecap thing I do not understand why someone would willingly want to wear one I don't understand being so religiously devout for any religion, even the one in which I was baptized, that you would make it that much of your identity. But I do understand I live in a country where if someone wants to live a devout life, so long as you're hurting nobody else, and so long as nobody is forcing you into it against your will, you are free to make that choice and I will go to the wall for you. Mm -hmm. If you are a Canadian citizen and a Muslim woman and you choose of your own free will to wear a niqab because you are that devout, that is your choice, sister, and I am there with you. 
Well, we, if your man is forcing you to do it, I feel for you. I guess that's different. But if you're choosing it of your own free will, kind of like nuns' habits. This is Canada. You get to do that. Mm-hmm. Yes. And if you are doing it of your own free will, and if you have gone to your citizenship, you've gotten your citizenship, and you have gone into that room with that female justice, and you have lifted that covering, and you have shown your face, and you have met all the requirements, and then you're at that ceremony, this, and somebody's going to come around and try to make your first moments as a Canadian citizen a moment in which you are being discriminated against your first moments as a Canadian citizen being a moment of discrimination. I cannot stand for that. And this guy stood in support of that. Now, of course, this might affect only 0.04% of the Canadian population who are female and Muslim and willingly of their own choice choose to wear a niqab. Much like is the issue with trans children, isn't it? Well, once you start restricting restricting what women can wear, that's a slippery slope to start restricting what women can do with their bodies because wearing clothing is on their body. So what's next? Tattoos? What's next after that? Oh, oh, you need to cover up to your neck. You can't show below your knees. Oh, guess what? You can't get an abortion. Oh, guess what else? You can't work anymore. You have to stay in the house and raise children. You think I'm being ridiculous? That's what these religious zealots want. And that's what Bill 21's about too. Is if you're going to go out looking like that, well, then we're going to limit your ability to earn a living. We're going to try to limit your ability to exist in public space, which is the exact, exact same thing as those bathroom bills are with transgender people. Because everybody has to go to the bathroom. So if you have to go to the bathroom, then there's only a certain range away from the home you can go because we don't want to see that. Mm. James comment here, the kneecap is often the first step of telling women what they can wear. And we're not arguing with that statement, James. It's the fact that somebody's trying to restrict what they can wear, whether it's the kneecap, the hijab, or, or the burqa. We are talking specifically of the fact that in Canada it is possible, as opposed to in Iran, Mm -hmm. for a woman to be so devout that she, of her own free will, would decide to do that. We're not talking about people, women, who are being forced to wear it because even though they live in Canada, in their home, their husband is living like it is still Iran. We have to open our minds to the possibility that in Canada, it is possible for someone to be so devout that they would choose it for themselves. Sikh men choose to have their head covered. Mm -hmm. It's not just women. Mm -hmm. Different religions, different practices. If you make, the principle is, is if you make the choice of your own free will and you are not harming anyone and nobody is forcing you, forcing you into it or threatening you into it, you should be allowed to do it and everybody should not have a damn opinion about it. Live and let live. Interesting questions in the chat here. I don't know if you want to. I'm I'm not willing to do any equivalencies on this. So I'm I'm not going to even entertain those questions. Okay. That's why I asked. There's an expression in French, c'est l'enculage de mouche. And in English, these are uh, trying to butt fuck flies. (laughs) I'm not going to do that. All right. I had, no, but it's like, it's all this stuff. Like, right? I, I have a friend who's Indian from India. Mm-hmm. 
says, hey, I wear jeans and a polo shirt. Am I doing engaging in cultural appropriation because I'm not wearing my traditional garb and wearing Western clothes? Mm. Like, I'm not going to engage in these questions. The principle is, right. if you are in Canada and you choose to wear it of your own free will and nobody's threatening you and nobody's forcing you to, you should. Whether it's booty shorts, whether it's drag, whether it's a kneecap, mm -hmm. everything we wear is drag. Everything. Suit, tie, Bermuda shorts, like how we choose, what we choose to put on, it's all drag. Never thought about that before. Um, not sure what I think about it, but sure. <laughs> we convey stuff about ourselves based on what we wear. Sometimes we wear a power suit for confidence. Sometimes we wear stuff to, I want to look powerful and confident. I'm wearing my suit with three people like this. I want to look relaxed. I'm wearing my sandals. I'd be in my red Speedo at all times if it was to be powerful and confident, but I can't do that. <laughs> all right. You think I'm wrong about that? Do you think I'm lying? I'm dead serious. I feel confident and powerful wandering around in a red Speedo. Do you know why? Because well, nobody else does it. And, and I find men back away from me because they're kind of nervous. <laughs> right? Although I wouldn't call it in drag, but hey, you know, that's, you know, that's terminology. Um, it's, it's to each their own when it comes to that. Yeah. So this person got into it with me. He says, well, you brought up the stitch line. So I suppose you support honor killings. No. I have a problem with the snitch line, therefore I must be pro-honor killing. Yes, it's that simple. That's exactly how it works, right? No. I realize that in Canada, we have this little thing called 911. Yeah. For all crimes. For everyone. No matter what. And therefore, there is no need for a very specific snitch line that singles out one group in particular for special treatment. Mm -hmm. That's what Canadians lost their minds. That's why it was bigoted. And I called the person a bigot. Because if there is something that applies to everyone... Oh my God. So you're calling me a bigot because uh, I have a problem with, you know, girls being forced into marriage and uh, yeah, I have a problem with other killers. I guess there are girls being forced into man and marriage in Mennonite communities. Mm -hmm. in Don't Manitoba. Seem to have an issue with that. You're not asking for a special s stitch line for them. Oh, because they worship the same God you do. Well, technically speaking, Muslims work at, worship the same one. They just call him Allah and not God, yeah. but they worship the same guy. They just don't work, worship Jesus. But they did talk about Jesus. He's talked yeah, about him Jesus in the Quran. Jesus is a prophet like Muhammad. Exactly. He's spoken about in the Quran. So it's like, once you start singling out people for special treatment, it is bigoted. And when something is happening to one community specifically, like, for example, when black people are being murdered by police and somebody wants to highlight that and said, hey, black people get together and their allies say, hey, stop killing us. And you say, all lives matter. You try to dilute that. When you try to dilute the pain of one specific community, in all communities so that we don't talk about them specifically or when you single out one community for special exclusionary treatment when there already exists something mm -hmm. to deal with that that applies to everyone you're being a bigot there are very few things in life that are black and white or that simple but that is that simple this is one of them 
You just don't do it. And as I've said many times on this show, if you do it when I'm there, I say, I'm going to slap my hand on the table and go, not on my watch. Mm-hmm. It is not done. So this asshole, we're in that green symbol as he's trying to make you believe that he cares about those people that were murdered in that mosque and everybody that was injured and everybody that loved them and everybody that cared and everybody else in Canada that was horrified by that. For clicks, votes, likes, and donations. Because you know he doesn't mean a word of it. I do not have time for it. And this is why this man does not deserve your vote. He will not stand with you. He is a fair weather friend, a sunny day soldier and barely that if there's nothing in it for him you will not find him and he'll probably be in some dark corner somewhere trying to stick it to you in some way guaranteed he is not a good person There is nothing authentic about this man. This man is a fraud on two legs. There is not a lie he will not tell. There is not a person he will not use. There is no deception he will not engage in in order to aggrandize himself, to engage in self aggrandizement of any kind. All he cares about is himself. And that's one of the reasons why Jugmeet Singh in particular pisses me damn off. Because this man wears a religious symbol on his head. Mm -hmm. He is devout. And he keeps on helping this man when he knows, when Mr. Singh knows very clearly what Polyev is about. But he too is so about himself that he is willing of Mr. Trudeau and of Mr. Polyev There is one that's willing to stand by him and he's shown it because he signed a confidence and supply agreement with them. Willingly. Prime Minister went up to him and said, hey, give me a couple of your priorities. Let's work on them together. And despite the fact that that happened, and despite the fact that he's a religious man, and despite the fact that he knows that Poliev supports policies that would oppress people based on their religion, he still cannot see his way to picking a side. Because power. Because popularity. Because clicks. Because likes. Because votes. Not because Canada. I don't give a shit about Canada or Canadians. So when I tell you, kids, don't vote vote comparing your choices to the Almighty. Vote comparing your choices to each other. You don't have to like Trudeau. But you do have to recognize that there's only one of these three men who will actually stand with you, whether you like him or not. Don't vote 
for assholes. <sighs> there are very few things that get me mad. There are very few things that get me mad. But people who just do not respect the fundamental basic humanity of other people pisses me off. I can't abide by it. I just can't. Not here, not in this country. Not with the face we say we present to the world. Mm. If you want to live in a country like that, there are 200 other ones. And our constitution, our charter right and freedoms, guarantees you mobility rights. Pack your bags and go somewhere else. I will not stop you. Go live your best life somewhere else. But do not bring that shit here. Unfortunately, uh, that shit is being amplified by... Uh, political leaders in this country who clearly only seek power. They don't want to govern. They only want power. And this leads into this. Uh, you know, when you said you can be two different things at the same time, just because I disagree with Paul F does not mean I support Trudeau. And here's a statement from Ed the Sock, which I think is very poignant. Yes. Hey, Ed, why do you keep defending Trudeau? I'm not. I'm defending facts. Pierre Polyev is telling out and out lies, which shows contempt for voters' intelligence and magnifying fears of Canadians for his benefit. That kind of BS pisses me off. Spin is one thing, lying is another. It's the reason we have a show. Yes. And I get called, oh, you're a liberal cock all the time. I don't care. Go ahead. Do you think you're harming me? You think you're hurting me? You think I care? No, I don't. Am I supporting the, tr the prime minister uh, when I defend him against lies? I suppose in a roundabout way, but more than anything else, I'm trying to defend the goddamn truth. I'm sick of the lies. I'm sick of the lies. I'm sick of the lies. And I'm sick of the liars who keep getting away with their lies and are never held to account for it. I'm going to say this time and time again till I'm blue in the face. We need to hold these lying assholes responsible for their goddamn lies. And I'm sick of it. And here's another one. Have you seen this? Here's another one. Watch this. This oh, is God, her. 59 seconds. The gig. You cannot live in a photo op. The videos won't bring warmth to the 300,000 people without homes. His tweets won't help the single mom who's trying to make her mortgage payment next month. And his press conferences will not help the thousands of young people trying to move out of their parents' basement. Why won't he stop subsidizing the bureaucracy who are blocking construction and focus on getting builders with shovels in the ground? They really have a thing about people living in their parents' basements, right? Mm -hmm. Minister for Housing, Infrastructure, and Communities. What the Conservatives dismiss as photo, photo ops are binding agreements with cities that have led to them to already change their rules to get more homes built. What they dismiss as press conferences included a new measure this morning that's going to extend low-cost loans to colleges and universities and builders to help those young people find a home and to free up supply in communities. And if they are concerned with housing stats as the appropriate metric, I would point out never once when the opposition leader was a housing minister did he get as many homes built as we did last year. Hey! I just, yeah, I, yeah. <sighs> I don't, At least he called uh, out her lies. Yeah. I just. <sighs> Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do. I have another clip for you, but we'll show you that after the, um, it's, it's, this is a good one too. We'll show it after the, uh, after the credits. Right. Uh, I'm, yeah. If you're listening to this on podcast, I was a little shouty. It was a little, little yelly. Um, 
usually not my tone. If it was a little much, I am... Um, I don't want to say I'm sorry. You have nothing to apologize for. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it's not my usual self, but, um, that's my fire. And I try to deal with it with cheerfulness and welcoming and friendship, you know, and some jokes, some snark, some sarcasm a little bit of camp, you know, singing little bits of songs, making jokes, making funny faces. But my flame, the thing that lights my passion, the thing that Mr. Grizzly says, the reason why I do this, the reason why I started the blog 11 years ago. This is, that's why. This, as a gay man, I know what it's like being hated just because I exist. I am aware that every day I will choose to wake up, I am committing an act of rebellion because there are people that wish I would not exist. I cannot tolerate that or anyone else, I know what it feels like, and I don't want any other human ever to experience that. You should be free to be your authentic self and live your best life. And that is not a reality in every country in this world, but it should be a goddamn reality in this one. So, if it was a little much, don't apologize. I'm not. Stop apologizing. fucking apologizing. You have nothing to apologize for. Okay? I'm scolding you right now. Do not fucking apologize. There's no reason to. You called it as you saw it. You're emotional about it because it's real, because you fucking lived it. Don't apologize. Put it in their face, shove it in their face, and tell them to shut the fuck up. Don't apologize. I mean it. You know I love you, man. And I'm going to call you on your shit. This is shit. Don't apologize. You have nothing to apologize for. Not on my watch. So long as I breathe, not on my fucking watch. We hope that you enjoyed this episode because we enjoyed making it for you. <sighs> because democracy is something that you do. <sighs> Write your in peace. Write your media. And if you have the opportunity to put your body in the way, in some way, run for something, volunteer for something, do it because we need you because sharing is caring please share this episode with your peeps and poops if you would like not to miss an episode you don't have to thanks to the ray girl that qr code under my chin is uh brings you to our pod page podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words if you would like to support us in other ways you can go to our youtube page true north eager beaver media and uh, click on like share and subscribe make like kit elaine 
And if you would like to uh, support us in other ways, the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head uh, brings you to our coffee page. That's coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, all lowercase letters, all in one word. And there you'll find the Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund. Uh, uh, everything that you give to support us uh, is very much um, appreciated. A lot of you have been donating. Sorry, we haven't been able to uh, thank you personally yet, but we will find a time on a, on a show where we have some time at the end to do that. Um, Mr. Grizzly, some words of wisdom, please. Yeah, when you see it, call it out. When you see hate and racism, call it out every goddamn time. Don't let it go. Do your part. Now, don't put yourself in jeopardy. I know I can because of this. The six-foot-tall, 185-pound white male. Nobody's going to cross me. Nobody's going to shit on me. I can put myself in jeopardy, and I know I have nothing to fear. I've done it before. I'll do it again. When you see it, call it out, but make sure you do so, so that you will not be brought harm. Don't stand for racism. Don't stand for hatred. If you stand by and do nothing, you're culpable. So if you need to call the police, if you need to call security, if you need to write your MP or your MPP or your MLA, do what is necessary to call it out and put a stop to it. Don't put yourself in harm's way but do what you can. Get into some good trouble. Yeah, hell yeah. And um, uh, Dan or uh, Kit Angela or Kit Leanne, if you're there, if you can uh, put us uh, put down the address again for tomorrow in the chat so that we can say it. 165 Barton Street, Hamilton. Pardon, what is that? 165 Barton Street in Hamilton. 165 Barton Street in Hamilton. If you can uh, get there tomorrow, to help celebrate Jordan's birthday and to bring attention to uh, Canadians who die while they are supposed to be in the protective custody of the state. Very important. Mr. Grizzly, please roll the credits. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. I've got a video clip for you that... Um is showing a former cabinet member calling out hypocrisy. And you'll have to pay attention to the man in the middle. Now, this is a, a, a handheld phone video of a, of, a, of a television program, so it's not the best audio, but kind of hits home. But I, I think the other reality is the Liberals need to do a better job in telling the story as to why the housing situation in Canada is in a bloody mess. It's in a bloody mess because provincial governments back in 1986 said, get out, feds, give us the money and we'll do it. And they took the money for over 20 years and didn't do it. Trudeau, to his credit, said in 2017, I am going to get back into housing. And in the last five years, he's been ramping up all of the programs that you've seen coming on stream. I think today he mentioned half a million new housing bills. But the bottom line is we spent 20 years with provinces saying we will look after this. It's our bailiwick. It's our uh, jurisdiction. And then they didn't do anything. And now they're the ones pointing the finger at the federal government saying it's all, it's all the Fed's fault. But the reality is... The provinces dropped the ball for 20 years on housing, and that's why we're in the mess that we're in. Uh, but I, I think... 
that's I, Brian Lilly in the middle and you fade know, deer in the headlights. And that's Sheila Copps speaking to those mm -hmm. who are listening. And in that clip, there was also Faye Johnstone, mm -hmm. the transgender rights activist who we keep on hoping to try to get on the show. Well, at some point, I would hope. Yes, be a little lander. Sheila Copps yeah. told you what it is that we've been telling you for months on this show. It's a about potential responsibility, and they've dropped the ball on it. And our the premiers feds. are the problem. Yeah. So who's coming in to fix it? The feds. Meanwhile... The leader of the loyal opposition keeps blaming the federal government for a provincial matter because he wants to obfuscate the situation and he doesn't want you to understand civics and he's doing it intentionally so you will vote conservative because he's saying he's going to fix the problem but he doesn't tell us how meanwhile the federal government is doing something about the problem the provincial conservative governments have created and don't get me wrong, in Ontario, there was a liberal government for a long time that didn't do a damn thing. But as far as I'm concerned, Dalton McGuinty was liberal in name only. Why the fuck do they have Brian Lilly? I don't know. Anyway, have a beeferific day, kids. I'll see you.